And thanks for dropping by. I wanted to have a little story time just with you. What do you think? Does this look intriguing? Gods and heroes. How about a little Egyptian mythology? Okay. It's fun to learn. It'll put you to sleep. Believe me. Now, on the cover, we have the god Anubis, who is portrayed with the body of a man and the head of a dog or a jackal. Anubis is the god of the afterlife. <sighs> Mummification, burial, so dear to the Egyptians. Now, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. So here we have Anubis on a very large scale, right? Just drinking in. <gasps> How handsome is that? I don't know about you, but I love the combination of blue and yellow. And I've always preferred gold. The Egyptians were the same. And this brilliant, bold blue is the shade of lapis lazuli, which we can see in my earrings. Very ornate and regal. Here we see some hieroglyphics. So shall we read a bit of the story? Mm. Powers of the Unknown. What makes the rain fall and the sun shine? What lies beyond the stars? Why is life followed by death? Since the beginning of human civilization, people have sought the answer to nature's mysteries, an understanding of what or who made it possible. No mere mortal has such power. Only beings of divine origin could push the seasons forward, forge mighty civilizations, and shape the very earth. The gods, those mysterious creatures who inspired both hope and fear, were responsible. Myths the stories of their exploits brought light to unanswerable darkness in the ancient world. We honor these beliefs and traditions by retelling them thousands of years later. Lords of the Two Kingdoms, some 5,000 years ago, the combined dynasties of ancient Egypt's upper and lower kingdoms rose from the fertile banks of the Nile River and dominated northern Africa until around 30 BC. The ruler of Egypt, called a pharaoh, was considered the son of a god and charged his scribes 
with carefully preserving Egypt's history in an alphabet of symbolic pictures called hieroglyphics. These right here. What are we going to find under the flap? <gasps> Look at the beautiful colors. I just love this book, don't you? <gasps> Family feud. All families have their dramas, don't they? <laughs> the Egyptian gods led lives filled with passion, bittersweet love, and family rivalry. Osiris, the god of the harvest, and his dedicated queen, Isis, ushered the kingdoms of Egypt into a golden age. But as most tales go, Trouble lurked in paradise. Hungry for power, his brother Seth, the god of chaos, trapped poor Osiris in an enchanted casket and stole away his life force. Heartbroken Isis magically revived her beloved husband just long enough for her to bear a single child, the falcon-headed Horus, who would one day take his deceased father's place, continuing the battle against his wicked uncle Seth, who killed him. Oh my goodness. Horus is my favorite of the Egyptian gods. I have a bit of an obsession with him at the moment. <laughs> you will forgive me, I'm sure. What about this flap? The diminutive demigod Bess was revered in many Egyptian households for his powers to ward off misfortune and protect little children. Unlike his brother and sister gods, who were always depicted in profile, drawings of Bess stared straight out, ready to face evildoers straight on. Way to go, Bess. Uh-huh. And there's my friend. The Wedjet, or whole one, a common Egyptian hieroglyph signified wholeness and healing and represented the eye of Horus who gazed down at the earth with the sun and the moon as his eyes beautiful with his falcon head and his double crown representing the upper and lower kingdoms unified. Thank you, Bess. And the fertility goddess Hathor, who often took the form of an elegant crowned cow, nurtured expectant mothers through childbirth a dangerous time in an era of limited no medical knowledge. Yes. Thank you, Hathor. Mmm. Here we see the scales. With a feather and a vessel and a crocodile. Do you know the story? the master of the hereafter. Many a pharaoh's tomb is littered with statues of gruesome Anubis. This guy. Is he gruesome? I think he's kind of cute. Believed to be the creator of the first mummy and guardian over the king on his journey 
into the afterlife, a world beyond death. The jackal had a god steadies a great scale that weighs each mortal's heart. That's you and me. Known as a caw against the feather from the crown of Matt, the goddess, the goddess of truth, innocent hearts in this jar escaped the jaws of the hungry she-beast Amit and entered the presence of Osiris in the afterlife. So one's heart had to be as pure and weightless as a feather. Or well, a horrendous end was met. Oh dear, what's happening here? Felines in the family. You may have heard my cat talking, meowing to me, <laughs> talking to me during this video. Well, the people of ancient Egypt believed that cats acted as watchful household guardians on behalf of the goddess Bastet, the cat-headed protector. Families adorned their feline pets with jewelry and allowed them to eat at the table as equals. When a beloved cat passed into the afterlife, everyone in the house shaved their eyebrows to show their sorrow. A sorrowful moment indeed. Let's fold him back in, shall we? And because I'm a little bit obsessed with Horace at the moment, I wanted to show you two beautiful representations of Horace I acquired recently. Both at the British Museum in London. This is a beautiful ornament that embellished my Christmas tree this year, showing his two crowns and the face of a falcon in this beautiful, beautiful azure shade of blue and ribboned with gold and well because i love buying a refrigerator magnet <laughs> whenever i go on a new voyage well i haven't yet been to egypt it's on my short list the British Museum holds many of its treasures. Agreeably, that is controversial. However, this beautiful representation of Horus showing the hieroglyphics and his gilded body. Well, it beautifies my refrigerator, <laughs> along with many, many other souvenirs. Darling, I see your eyes are getting sleepy. <gasps> sleepy. Sleepy. Allow the god Horus to protect you with his left eye, which represents the moon, and allow him to inspire you with action and 
his right eye that represents the sun. Yin and Yang, the best of both worlds, <gasps> incorporated in Horus. And so I bid you sweet dreams into the afterlife. And I hope your heart is pure so you don't make the she beast, <laughs> but you go straight to Osiris and it'll lead you home. And I'll see you soon.